Good evening, everyone. My name is Mia Kami. Um, today, I'll just be sharing some music while people are coming in. Uh, the songs I'll be sharing will be original songs, and um, they do connect with why we're here today and uh, what we're about to be watching this evening. And so I hope you enjoy the music. Please do continue to mingle and converse. Um, but in case you might have missed it, there were some house rules that were brought up if you're coming in your bubble, just to be seated within your bubble and then two seats away from um, the next one. But I hope you enjoy the music and I hope you enjoy the evening. Malo. Dear society, would you care to tell me what it is I'm doing wrong? Dear society, your expectations of me, it all just feels so wrong. Nothing ever seems right When we mess up, we're in the spotlight Where beauty is a pretty face And it's what's on the outside that counts Cause nobody's perfect But that's what we have to be A smile's an only option don't you dare look unhappy Yeah, nobody's perfect But that's what we expect All your down days It's all in your head Sincerely, society Ego, selfishness, and pride It's a social competition The irrelevant amplified We're copy and pasting What we see trending Left shallow and empty Cause nothing ever seems right when we mess up, we're in the spotlight Where beauty is a pretty face And it's what's on the outside that counts Cause nobody's perfect But that's what we have to be A smile's an only option Don't you dare look unhappy Yeah, nobody's perfect but that's what we expect All your down days It's all in your head Sincerely, society Oh, No one can be who they are without feeling insecure no one can do what they love without feeling unsure All the hungry people, they feed off all the lies And all the attention comes after one dies So dear society, I can't sit here silently while you wait and realize too late That nobody's perfect Don't ever think that you need to be Your struggles and your battles It's a human thing to see Yeah, nobody's perfect And that's perfectly fine on your down days you'll get by I will stand by your side Don't you let the world decide Who you should be Sincerely Me Thank you Thank you Yeah, round of applause to, for me again one round of applause.
before I invite them here for just one more number and then we'll make a start uh, this uh, afternoon. Uh, just a um, uh, friendly reminder to all of us in terms of COVID protocol. If you're coming in here in your, in your bubble, it's okay to sit together, but then just leave two seats or so space uh, from your bubble to the next bubble, uh, just in terms of uh, COVID-19 uh, protocol, okay? Keep within your bubble and then uh, just leave some space for, for the other bubble. I'll just now give uh, the time again, the housekeeping matters, the loo is just across uh, where you had your refreshment on the LE, walking into the LE, it's on the right, uh, just for your information uh, with regards to the loo, the toilet, uh, which we want, may want to visit. Uh, halfway through the movie. Uh, but again, uh, we'll give the time again to Mia for one more uh, one more um, uh, song this afternoon and then we'll make a start. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. What if the roles were reversed and the victors didn't come first? Where would we be? I have a question. It's a little hard to ask, but even harder to get answers. Just because it's unfamiliar doesn't mean it's not normal either. It's just how we're taught to think Here we are lifting our voices Pushing for better choices No longer silent Time to start healing Healing from the hurt Time to keep fighting For what we deserve this system's not changing So we must be the first To put one foot forward Start moving forward By healing from the hurt Start healing from the hurt Hey I have a question what if you walked in my shoes and saw we have so much more to lose? Would you finally see? Just because it's unfamiliar doesn't mean it's not normal either. It's just how you see the world. Here we are lifting our voices, pushing for better choices. No longer silent Time to start healing Healing from the hurt Time to keep fighting For what we deserve This system's not changing So we must be the first To put one foot forward Start moving forward By healing from the hurt Start healing from the hurt Hey Just because it's unfamiliar Doesn't mean it's not normal either It's just how you're taught to think here we are lifting our voices pushing for better choices no longer silent time to start healing healing from the hurt time to keep fighting for what we deserve this system's not changing so i will be the first to put one foot forward start moving forward by healing from the hurt start healing from the hurt i'm healing from the hurt start healing from the hurt hey I have a 
question What if the roles were reversed And the so-called losers we came first Where would we be? Thank you. Um, I'll sing one more song and then we'll get into the pro. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so the last two songs have been original songs, so I'll finish off with an original as well. But I think I'll be singing another one later. Yes? Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, so this next one's called History. And I hope you like it. History repeats itself if we don't tread carefully. It opens doors to potential hypocrisy. If we don't learn from our mistakes, Cause you wanna get to work But you're not moving You say so much But never listen You say you wanna Wanna make a difference But you Yes, you You first need to change You first need to change Imperfect people Differences aside, we are all people And yet we manage to form unequal opportunities Tear down communities Put a stopper to unity If it's a threat to our own greed Cause you wanna get to work But you're not moving You say so much But never listen You say you wanna Wanna make a difference But you Yes, you You first need to change Hey 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 You first need to change Hey 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 Yeah, if you just pause for a second Look around for just a moment See the tired, the fed up, the hurt and the broken The existing lack of vision Where hate becomes religion World's in critical condition But we're in calm disposition Privilege blurs our sight We've become blinded Shut off the world and become closed-minded What direction are we heading in the world that we're living in? Stop, open your eyes, pay attention and listen The people are crying The planet is dying Some leaders could be lying And it's terrifying the problems at hand won't just disappear If we just stand here In your future What do you hope to see? What kind of ancestor Do you want to be? Cause you wanna get to work So get moving Open up your heart So you can start seeing The difference that we need The change that we can be The future I hope to see I know, I know it starts with me I know change starts with me oh, oh, oh Cause history Repeats itself if we don't tread carefully It closes doors on any opportunity If we fail 
If we fail, if we fail to be that change. Well, thank you. Can we have another round of applause to Mia for those wonderful sweet sound? Makes us uh, feel uh, relaxed. It's a Friday. Uh, afternoon, Friday evening, and it's uh, no better way to celebrate uh, Human Rights Day with those lyrics, with the, word, the, with, with, with the songs that Mia just sang to us. Um, we'll now make a start uh, to uh, the event uh, today, um, you know, with the theme of uh, reducing inequality and advancing human rights. I would like to welcome you all uh, this afternoon. A warm Pacific greetings from USP campus here in Suva, Fiji. Bulovinaka, everyone. And also Bulovinaka to those who are streaming in online uh, from the nine campuses um, around uh, the Pacific. So thank you very much for also tuning in uh, this wonderful afternoon um, to celebrate the Human Rights Day. Uh, of course, um, this event uh, has been put together and organized by the Pacific uh, Community, the University of the South Pacific as a host, and also the Office for the High Commission for Human Rights uh, Office, regional office here in Suva. And we are also grateful to, to mention that it is supported by the government of uh, Sweden and also the Australian aid. Uh, without uh, further ado, I will now uh, move on to the to the program where we have the first speaker, who is uh, Mr. Miles Young, the director for for Human Rights and Social Development Division with the Pacific Community. A round of applause to Mr. Young. didn't realize my own strength. Minaka <laughs> Quila, and um, I've just, the thought just came to my mind when Mia finished her session, maybe we just can the movie and we just listen to Mia all night long. It's so beautiful listening to her and I just, uh, just can't get enough of her music and, and the words and the lyrics that go with the music. First of all, a big uh, warm welcome to you all, uh, both here in the uh, Lodala Bay campus and also across the Pacific. Navalevo for joining us this evening for the opening of the 2021 Pacific Human Rights Film Festival and the screening of the film Vai. And talking about the movie Vai, I wanted to mention that we have two actors from Vai with us. Um, and we have uh, Ro Mariani and also Felix. So perhaps if, I know Felix is a bit mandua, but maybe Ro Mariani could uh, stand up and give us a bit of a wave so that we can see you. Give us, give a round of applause, please. Dinaka. So today is, of course, uh, International Human Rights Day. Every year on the 10th of December, it's, it's celebrated. Uh, across the globe. It's the day on which the United Nations General, uh, General Assembly adopted in 1948 the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which is regarded as the founding document for modern human rights, modern day human rights. The theme for this year is equality, which is of course at the heart of human rights and embedded in Article 1 of the Universal Declaration. All human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights, as Article 1 states. In terms of human rights in the Pacific, there has been notable progress over the recent past. For example, we've seen increased protection against domestic and gender-based violence against the, um, in the Pacific. More Pacific Island countries have committed themselves to guaranteeing the rights of all individuals by ratifying international human rights treaties. And there has been increasing interest amongst Pacific Island countries in establishing national human rights commissions or institutions. But, but 
What we can't deny is that there is still more work to do in this area. Freedom of expression, access to justice, the right to information, the treatment of persons in custody. While many international human rights treaties have been ratified, implementation at national level remains a challenge. The rates of violence against women in the Pacific are amongst the highest in the world. And globally, Pacific women have the lowest representation in national parliaments and local governments. Persons with disabilities in the Pacific are amongst the most marginalized in their communities. They're overrepresented amongst those living in poverty, underrepresented in social, economic, and public life, including in decision making, and they generally have lower health and education outcomes. And of course, as we all know, the COVID 19 pandemic has disproportionately affected already marginalized people and communities in terms of mental and economic consequences and in other areas. Now I mention these because on Human Rights Day, it's important that we reflect on what we have achieved and what human rights are, but also we reflect on what is to be achieved. And as I mentioned, there is a lot. As specific peoples, we have a rich history in storytelling and films. And I'm pleased to say we'll be showing our stories from the region over the next few days. Stories which touch on a range of issues and themes which have a connection to human rights. We have deliberately focused on Pacific stories from across the region for the film festival because we are proud of them and we must showcase them at every opportunity. There is nothing more powerful than to see people on film who look and talk like us in contexts which are familiar to us. Of course, the beauty, is, the beauty of stories and films is that we experience and interpret them in different ways. And I hope that Vai and the other films, which will be shown as part of the festival, inspire you and provide you with food for thought. So let me close by thanking the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, and the University of the South Pacific, for also giving us the beautiful space that we're in today, and also the campuses across the region for this opportunity to collaborate on this film festival. Nakva Levo also to our donors, the European Union, uh, the governments of Australia and Sweden. There are many, of, uh, many who have worked behind the scenes to make this happen. Now, I won't mention you all, but you know who you are. Um, particular mention, a special mention. I said I wouldn't mention you, but a special mention to Ben, Naka Ben for all your work, uh, Kalpana, I know Joe, Setita, and others. So, Vnava Levu. And finally, to all, it's, it's so humble to see so many of you here today. I uh, hope you enjoy tonight and the rest of the films over the next few days. Vinaka. Can we have another round of applause to Mr. Young? Yeah, that I guess uh, sends, uh, sets a very good uh, platform uh, scene for us today. Uh, he mentioned about, uh, you know, the issues and the challenges and how we as Pacific Islanders could, you know, address these problems and uh, challenges in the human rights. And of course, one way is through movies, film, and that's why we are here for the film festival for this, uh, for this week. Uh, without further ado, I will now uh, invite uh, Ms. Heike Alifson uh, for her uh, address this afternoon. Ms. Alifson is the regional representative uh, for the UN Human Rights Office here in the Pacific. Round of applause for her. Thank you. Yeah. Drop it. Thank you so much. Pula Vinaka and good evening. All human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights is article one of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And we cannot repeat this often enough. This is a key principle. And with today's theme for Human Rights Day, we're really going back to basics as it were 
because equality and non-discrimination really speak to all of us. And equality, as the High Commissioner for Human Rights said in her statement on Human Rights Day today, is to embrace diversity. And it is also to demand that all are being treated without any kind of discrimination. So we are celebrating today the 73rd anniversary of the Universal Declaration, which is again our guiding light for human rights in the Pacific, in the world, everywhere. We're the first to celebrate it globally. And therefore we are of course also setting certain standards. And I welcome you all. This weekend's film festival embraces the principles of human rights as embodied in the Universal Declaration. Culture, development, dignity, sustainable peace. Human rights are also key to prevention of some of the biggest global crises and conflicts. A human rights lens to issues allows us to look at the root causes, the underlying issues of manifestations of violations of human rights trends. And it allows us to look at entrenched inequalities, at structural discrimination, at unfair institutions, and at societal norms that do not support equality and non-discrimination. Equality has the power to tackle these exclusions and it has the power to empower people, in fact, to participate in decision-making that affects their lives. Human rights also helps societies and their governments to address and to find solutions to these institutional inequalities. Those who've been most affected by inequalities and by discrimination, such as women, children, especially girls, persons with disabilities, LGBTI people, older persons, and many others, affected communities in rural areas and those who are most left behind, especially in some of our Pacific contexts here, are the ones who ought to be empowered and who ought to be participating in all of our human rights action today and every day. Equality also has the power to help us break the cycle of poverty and it can give young people the world over and in the Pacific new opportunities and advance the right to a healthy environment and the right to be treated equally in the context of the climate justice that we all have to work for. The COVID-19 pandemic has not impacted everyone equally, but in fact, it has entrenched social divisions and it has shown up more inequalities, worsening inequalities. It has also reversed certain development gains that we have, and that was very nicely outlined by Miles earlier, that had been achieved in the last couple of decades pre-pandemic. It has reduced access to justice and to services that had been created pre-pandemic. So our environment is really changing in ways that are not really foreseeable. And in that changing context, human rights are our most basic, most important factor. Human rights remain our sure and universal point of reference, and they can help us set a course towards inclusion. On this day, we're calling for a new social contract. And this social contract will bring us closer to, to equalities and discrimination. It requires new political commitment as well. And it requires participation and the just distribution of resources and opportunities. Because we're not all in the same boat. As many have said after the COVID-19 pandemic hit us. Because as the Secretary General has so nicely said recently or starkly, in fact, reminded us, 
while we seem to be all in the same boat, some people are on multi-million dollar yachts and others are just barely clinging to life rafts. So he has very starkly outlined the consequences of inequality and discrimination. The films that we show today in our film festival weave together Pacific voices and Pacific stories. And we perfectly illustrate some of the inequality and discrimination challenges that we've mentioned earlier. Inequality of minorities to live a life as full parts of society, as full members of society, um, gender inequalities, inequalities um, of indigenous peoples, and inequalities between countries. These films speak to all of that. And the films will provide us with food for thought, and they will also provide us with um, some, some ideas, maybe, maybe wanted, want us to, to take action uh, for human rights. The films are films of hope also. They're maybe not quite as shocking as the film that I showed when I was a 17-year-old NGO human rights activist, and I was trying to, to really um, use the shock and awe technique of um, film festivals in showing a film about somebody who was executed on the electrical chair. And we thought that that would be shocking people into action and campaign against the death penalty. Now that was over 30 years ago. And I think our methods these days have changed and we have become a little more sophisticated. These films that we're showing today are also films that will not shock you, but hopefully they will show you stories of hope and they will also show you what to do about human rights. So we'd like to thank our partners, the Pacific community. We'd like to thank our gracious hosts, the University of the South Pacific, who are also a partner in today's film festival. And we would like to thank our donors and partners, the European Union, the government of Sweden and Australian Aid. And most of all, we'd like to thank our audience. We know that today's um, and tomorrow's and Sunday's festival is sold out. And we're hoping that these ranks here will fill a little more. So with that, thank you all. Enjoy the films. Happy Human Rights Day today and every day. And over to Aquila. Thank you. Thank you again, uh, Heike, for reminding us that, you know, the Pacific is strategically located, that it's such that we celebrate the day first, while the other global uh, uh, members of the global village will then celebrate later on. Uh, thank you also for the call for the new social contract. And I guess the call from this side of the Pacific will be echoed around the world, around the globe, as we uh, um, people from around the world will celebrate Human Rights Day. Um, and also thank you for uh, uh, mentioning that the movies will, show, will surely tell us a story of hope. Uh, with that, uh, I will now uh, invite our keynote uh, uh, speaker this afternoon, who is none other than the, the Deputy Vice Chancellor for the University of the South Pacific, Dr. Julio Masaso Tuikolonahau Pangona. And I'm, can I please uh, invite uh, the Vice Chancellor to take the floor? Now, a round of applause and welcome him in a Pacific way. Thank you very much, Aquila. Good evening. Kulavinaka, Malawi Lele, and warm Pacific Islands greetings to all of you. I'd like to uh, acknowledge the presence of um, Ms. Heike Arson, the regional representative for the Office of the United Nations High Commission for Human Rights, Mr. Miles Young, Director of the Pacific Communities Human Rights and Social Development Division. Dr. Sandra Dutt and members of the uh, University of the South Pacific Senior Management Team, members of the Diplomatic Corps, 
Ms. Roa Maliani, Felix, actors and actresses, Ms. Miyakami, and all the enthusiastic musicians, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted this evening to join in the stimulating gathering and to observe the Pacific Human Rights Film Festival for 2021. I'm deeply honored to be asked to share a few words in support. Movies or films to play a key role in shaping society. The same applies to those championing human rights and human rights stories in the Pacific region. Equally, movies have a role in advocating human rights and supporting human rights and respecting and promoting the rights of others. This year's Human Rights Day theme relates to equality, a fundamental principles of human rights. The principles of equity and non-discrimination are at the heart of human rights and underscore the themes evident in the films on show this weekend. We welcome the inclusion of the year's festival Pacific focused and Pacific produced films that speak to the different themes, including indigenous rights, LGBTI rights, the nuclear legacy, gender equality and women's empowerment, and importantly, to raise Pacific voices. Together with stakeholders, including the United Nations and the Pacific community, amongst others, USP continues to work in strong cooperation to advance aspects of human rights through education. Since 1998, in partnership with the USP Law School, the SPC's human rights program has delivered the family law and human rights module of the professional diploma in legal practice for USP law graduates wishing to practice law in the Pacific. USP, through its partnership with the UN Office of the High Commissioner of Human Rights, delivered the Human Rights Defenders course in semester one 2021 this year, which would be embedded in the Diploma in Leadership Governance and Human Rights Program. The USP's um, Program in Leadership Governance and Human Rights um, had, had successfully collaborated with the SPC's Human Rights Program funded through the Australian Aid in 2012. In setting up the initial program, and is also currently collaborating with UNDB to develop a new anti-corruption course. In the face of the unprecedented challenge of finding an effective response to COVID-19 pandemic, it is more important than ever that the academic community be allowed to research, debate and disseminate, and share knowledge freely, including cross-border cooperation or cooperation without harassment, repression, or persecution. The imperative to respect, protect, and strengthen academic freedom has never been greater. It is in this spirit that USP continues to foster strong partnerships and stakeholder collaborations in relevant areas, including human rights, to advance, pursue, and disseminate knowledge across the Pacific region and beyond. I take this time to wish you all a happy Human Rights Day as we together extol the principles of human rights and equality for all. I hereby declare the Pacific Human Rights Festival officially open. Hello, Peter. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Panga, for uh, the Vice Chancellor for the University of the South Pacific, for those wonderful, inspiring words uh, that, of course, will uh, uh, kickstart uh, the movies for tonight, the film for tonight, tomorrow, and also on Sunday. 
Um, before there's a short introduction of Offa, the director, may I again uh, request uh, Mia, just one more number, please, Mia. Just one more number, and then we'll do the introduction, short introduction of Offa. We'll also um, discuss a bit on the film before we showcase it tonight. Naka? Thank you. Um, so this song, before we go into the um, film, the song is called Mana. And Mr. Young had mentioned how the importance of storytelling plays such a big part in our identity and who we are, and how beautiful it is to see stories being told from our people, our stories being told with people that look like us, that talk like us. And so this song speaks on storytelling and its connection to our identity. So I hope you enjoy it and I hope you enjoy the film. Hello. Why do we accept definitions of how our people should be based off of written accounts of a man that looks nothing like me he could speak our language but not from his heart when he wrote our history he set us apart abandoned and bruised left alone in the dark but i won't let that past define who i am when i listen closely i hear my ancestors chant tell our stories redefine a past that was written for us before add a chapter it's time to write a little more recast the future it's time to let our story soar this is my mana my spirit my soul this is me this is mana this is me so when did a textbook determine what makes me who i am Pages that say nothing of the blood that was shed, the stolen resources and land. For there is still so much that we have yet to learn, hidden in the archives that they couldn't burn. It is rooted within us, look closely and you will see, you will see. So tell our stories, redefine a past that was written for us before. Add a chapter, it's time to write a little more. Recast the future, it's time to let our story soar. This is my mind, not my spirit, my soul. This is me. This is mana, this is me. This is mana. She spoke to the ocean and she sang with the trees. She can be heard in the quiet whisper of the breeze. She is everything I aspire to be. She is mana, she lives in me. She spoke to the ocean and she sang with the trees. She can be heard in the quiet whisper of the breeze. She is everything I aspire to be. She is mana, she is me. So tell our stories, redefine a past that was written for us before. Add a chapter, it's time to write a lot more. Recast the future, it's time to let our stories soar. This is my mind, not my spirit, my soul. This is me. 
this is mana, this is me. Cause I wanna bring power back to my people. Wanna bring power back to my home. Yes, I can bring power back to my people. I can bring power back to my home. Yes, I will bring mana back to my people. I will bring mana back to my home. Yes, I will bring mana back to my people. I will bring mana back to the planet that I call home. Voilà. Bringing, bringing the mana and bringing the power back to the people. Uh, now uh, we will uh, move on to uh, offer the director for the movie Vai. Just a quick um, introduction about the film, and then we will show to you. So, uh, colleagues, uh, tech uh, guys, over to offer. Naka. Malo Mia, uh, Mia Kami, from Afana Pito, Hiva Mai Kamata Kita Programa, he if you have any, the Mofa Malo Lahiatu, um, exactly as you said, bring the mana back to my people. And I think, as a uh, putting my hat on as a filmmaker, that's exactly what um, my sister Sharon Whippy, who's also online, uh, listening in. We're hoping to share with you with this beautiful uh, creation that uh, you're about to see this evening. So, with that said, Malolele, Nisabula Vinaka, Falafa Lahiatu, Kiorana, Talofa, Kiorakoto Katoa. It is such a privilege for uh, Sharon and I to welcome you all to the screening of Vai tonight. Um, it's, a, it's a special and unique project for us and for the, our fellow uh, filmmakers, female filmmakers, because, um, and I think I won't get too much into it. I always try and, and, and be careful of what, I'm, what I say about the movie because I want you to see it for yourself first and experience the stories and then we can get into a talanoa. But um, for those of you who have heard that, that uh, term, celluloid ceiling, it's, uh, it's like a branch that is bro broken off from the glass ceiling. And the celluloid ceiling is like a metaphor for the underrepresentation of women in film. And although it's uh, born out of Hollywood, uh, we could say that it, you know, it applies across the board in all countries with the film industry, with women underrepresented, and uh, particularly in the roles of director, producer, writer, cinematographers, and of course, the ongoing entrenched inequalities that uh, women face in this industry is a huge impediment, not forgetting the sexual harassment pandemic that was rampant throughout uh, the film industry in, in Hollywood, and no doubt in other countries where the film industry um, is big and massive, like we saw with the Me Too movement. I mean, for example, the title of auteur, typically reserved for male filmmakers, you know, I think with Vai, we are uh, nine, and I would like to say powerful oceanic feminists from across the oceanic Pacific who got together to smash that celluloid ceiling and to also um, bring to the forefront the way we want to tell our stories and the way we portray our woman, particularly on screen. So, we have Sharon and Nicole Whippy from Fiji, Matasila Freshwater from Solomon Islands, Emily Jo uh, Almua from both Aotearoa and Samoa, Maria George from Kukiairani, Marina uh, McCartney from Samoa, Diana Fuimana from uh, Niue, and Bex Arahanga from Aotearoa. This feature film is the story of one woman's journey of empowerment through culture, but intertwined, you will see um, human rights themes cutting across all our stories. And so we're really excited to see how you uh, experience these stories and the Dalano that unfolds after that. Uh, it is also a celebration of Section J, and I have to uh, just quickly uh, mention Section J here from the Beijing Platform for Action because you know, this is the way that we are moving 
towards achieving the objectives under Section J to increase the participation and access of women to expression and decision making in and through the media and in all forms of media, including film. And uh, the second objective to promote a balanced and non stereotype portrayal of women in the media. And um, I would like to think that this is one of the, the, the key um, aspirations of VAI, this feature film VAI that you'll be seeing soon. So um, I'm going to stop there. Uh, uh, wishing you all um, uh, enjoyable experience and um, we'll see you afterwards for our good Dalanoa. Happy Human Rights Day. To all our attendees and uh, participants present with us here today, to all our viewers as well joining us online, um, Bulavinaka and warm welcome to you all. Uh, happy World Human Rights Day. Um, before we proceed, uh, I have been given the task to uh, moderate this session. This is a question and answer session. It's a Talanos session with two of the nine uh, women that were behind the filmmaking of the movie Vi. And this is your opportunity to also ask them questions. You won't get this opportunity uh, like any other to be here today and ask them key questions. As you looked at the movie, it spans over eight countries um, as well. And there are underlying themes that connect to the World Human Rights Day as well. With that being said, I'll just introduce our two uh, speakers that will be joining us virtually. Uh, firstly, I will introduce the film director, Offa Gutenberg Likiliki from Tonga. Uh, Offa Kilevuka Glutenbeer Likiliki is a filmmaker and women's rights activist in Tonga and the Pacific. She has twice been the recipient of the International Women of Courage Award in recognition of her work in advocating for women and children's rights in Tonga. Her 2017 debut short film, The Black Pan, was an official selection of the Hawaiian International Film Festival, where it also premiered and subsequently screened at Maoriland. The Women's Film Festival, Philadelphia, Commonwealth Heads of Government Meeting London, Nukwa Lofa Film Festival, and the Okalani Film Festival. She is here to introduce the film Vai, which she wrote and directed in, co in collaboration with women from across the Pacific, including Sharon Whippy, who will join her for our post-screening discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, our second uh, speaker also present with us here tonight is Sharon Whippy from Fiji. Sharon Whippy was born in Fiji. She grew up in Auckland and now lives in Melbourne. She has written poetry and prose all her life and, how, and has worked for many years in education, teaching others while exploring her own creativity. She is drawn to and deeply passionate about stories of change and hope and dance as an expression of character. Along with her sister, Nicole, she collaborated as writer and director on the opening chapter of the film, Vi. Ladies and gentlemen, if you may join me in giving a round of applause to our two speakers present with us here today. Given that um, we're strict with time and it's, it's quite uh, late, we will be allowing 10 to 15 minutes based on questions being asked. If uh, you have any questions, we kindly request that you raise your hands up for the mics to be brought to you. And uh, Sharon and Offa are present with us here tonight, tonight as well to answer your questions. The floor is open. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your opportunity. Thank you. Uh, hello. Oh, hi, Sharon. Um, hi, Offer. Do we have Offer? Um, thanks very much for that amazing film. Uh, I enjoyed it a great deal. Um, and the everything about it is fantastic. It really needs the big screen treatment. This is the biggest screen I've seen it on uh, so far, and it was even better than the other times I've seen it. Um, so I, I would like to ask you a little bit about... Um, your inspiration for, for the movie. 
uh, for your your section of the movie, um, uh, how how it came about. Um, I, I, it seemed deeply personal. Every single story seemed seemed deeply personal. So I was just wondering if you could talk us through your inspiration. Thank you. Nisa Whoa, I can hear myself. It's beautiful to see you all. Um, my name is Sharon Whippy, and I'm, I'm speaking from the country of the Eastern Kulin Nation in Melbourne. Uh, my father is a Whippy from Savu Savu, and my mother's people are Osborns from Vanuabalavu. And you're absolutely correct that this story was deeply personal for me and my sister. This is based on our lived experience uh, before our family migrated uh, from Suva Fiji to Aotearoa. So um, that's where we went to when we wanted to tell our story. Our story is um, a celebration of the women in our family uh, whose journeys uh, have and, and sacrifices and love and care have brought us to where we are today. Um, so yes, it's very deeply, very, very deeply personal to, to us. I don't know if that answers your, your question. It was filmed in our house, um, our old, um, neighborhood in Service Street in Suva. Um, so we had that privilege of being able to go back to the land, uh, where we grew up, um, before leaving Fiji. Um, and from the get go, this being involved in this project was just a series of blessings, um, and our ancestors were with us the, the entire way. Um, Malo, Sharon. Malo, um, Ofa. <laughs> it's great to see your beautiful face. Sorry, I can't turn my camera on. I'm not in a place where I can turn it on. Um, too many distractions in the background. But anyway, um, thank you for that comment and the question. Um, we're, you know, just to give you a bit of a, a, a background to those uh, listening in and the participants who are there, um, we wrote this script um, collaboratively. So we were brought together um, in Aotearoa and we were taken away to um, an offshore island to, uh, to write together. And we spent, I think it was two or three days that we spent together and we each of us wrote the segments of that story for the feature film. So we weren't given a lot of time, but what we were encouraged to do was to write a story that um, would portray the empowerment of our woman and also um, bringing in the local uh using local actors, uh, using our local language as much as possible. Um, and I think that is how uh, we, you know, we all went off into our rooms over this three day kind of, uh, was it two days, Sharon, or three days? I can't remember. Um, retreat, writer's retreat to, to put the script together. But um, so for, I was the second segment. So I followed on from Fiji and what we had to do was we had to write the story as the, the story of one woman called Vai, as from childhood right through to um, the, the final story in Aotearoa, but in different island contexts. So that was quite complex in itself, but we managed to do it. And I think the solidarity amongst us and the instant connection between sisters across the Oceanic Pacific um, really helped us uh, put this story together. My story was inspired by, um, I've got four young children and I wanted to write a story around that age, uh, 12, 13, you know, what, what typically happens on a normal day in Tonga. And one of the things I see uh, are children coming to homes with water tanks on a daily basis asking for water. Um, you know, and it, and it kind of pains me to, to think that young children have to do that every day um, and you go from neighbour to neighbour and get turned down and then eventually find a house who's willing to, to share some water. And, you know, this is our rainwater and our tank waters and just the scarcity of it sometimes. And the actual island that we filmed the Tonga story on, they actually, all their water tanks on CSI Island, I had no water 
when we were actually filming. So we had to uh, take some water over to just, um, you know, uh, uh, use for our story. But the fact that, you know, it was actually a, a reflection of reality for the, for those people living on that island. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, um, the, the movie Vai, it might not be as... Uh, as obvious in terms of some of the, some of the stories are, are quite blatantly obvious in terms of the human rights issues, uh, such as in Kukiairani and the Aotearoa Samoa story. But in the rest of them, you can see subtle themes of, of human rights issues of, you know, migration, of right to education, of right to access to clean water, clean, safe drinking water. That's all woven in throughout the whole story of Vai. And I, and I hope that you all, you know, were able to experience it um, uh, the way that we wrote it. Malo. Thank you so much, Sharon and Offa. If anyone else has any other questions, the floor is open. We have one question from the gentleman in the middle. Hi. Hi. Thank you very much. Hi. Ah, there we go. Thank you very much. Uh, I've loved the film. I found it very interesting, um, very good in, in many senses. And uh, I'd like to know, I think, I don't know if I understood it well, that it has uh, eight directors, no? Yeah, okay. I would like to know when imagining, when, when creating this film, which, which um, what did you tell the different directors in order to look for something or not? Uh, did you let them do whatever they wanted, understand every part of the story the way they wanted, these women? Or did you orientate them somehow to, uh, to put some ideas that you want to be on each part of the story as a whole or not? because I found all of them quite interesting and uh, leading to different ideas on, on, on the way they, are, they have been made. And uh, well, I, that's the question I wanted to, to ask. What, what, what were the indications for the different directors, if there was a coherence or, or not, or how did it work in that sense? Thank you very much. Ofa? Offer? Yeah, you go, you go first, Sharon, and then okay. I'll add. Sure thing. So yeah, there, there were some um, some narrative structures that we were we were adhering to. Uh, one of the main themes throughout this film is um, that you will see the thematics of water is featured throughout um, each of the stories, and the name Vai in some. Oceanic languages means water, not every, but in some. And so these stories uh, use water as a theme in terms of what connects us, what binds us, sustains us, um, our pathways and migration, returning home. Uh, so, yes, that was one of the, th uh, the themes, the narrative themes that ran through this. As um, Ofa mentioned too, we were each given an age, yeah? So uh, Nicole and I worked on um, with the lovely Mariani, Ro Mariani and, and Felix on the beginning of her life. We had to tell um, a snippet of that time in a 10 minutes block, 10 minute block, and uh, where possible with one take. Right, so you might have noticed that fluidity, which again uh, resounds with the water theme that runs through this, the one take of um, each of our narratives where possible. 
So those were some of the um, some of the narrative structures that we um, adhered to as as we worked. And um, what what emerged from that was quite organic um, as a whole, um, which is which was extraordinary to witness as well. Yeah, off. I don't know if you want to add any more to that. Yeah, Malo Sharon, just to add to what Sharon has already said, um, when when Sharon said the one take, it was literally the one camera take. So so that you know uh, we wanted it to be seamless as possible. But also the other, just a technical um, addition to what Sharon said, we all shot our stories in one day. So we had the crew from the rise of the sun to the setting of the sun, and that was it. So we couldn't make any mistakes. We had to get it right. And um, we did uh, however many takes we could take in the one long shot, seamless shot. Um, and uh, then at the end of, of that, we had to sit through our footage and choose the take to put, uh, to edit together to make the feature film that you all just witnessed. Yeah, I just thought I'd say that because a lot of people don't um, understand the time constraints, but also the, the challenges, uh, technical and uh, production challenges that we were faced with one day to shoot. Thank you, Arthur and Sharon. Are there any other questions from the audience? Thank you. Hello. Yes, um, what touched me most of all was the, uh, the importance of the generational influence um, throughout the women, particularly that were there. Um, that really touched me. Um, besides seeing the beauty of the South Pacific, um, that was a sort of one wonderful thing coming through this, the, this movie. And I do appreciate that. Um, I appreciate um, this because I come from a culture which has been lost as far as generational influence is concerned. And I think it's important to um, the young people of the Pacific to recognise the importance of their parents and their grandparents in the way in which they develop their values. And I love that. And uh, so I appreciate your work. I have a question. Have you, is this your first um, production or have you done others in terms of the movie? I'll speak for myself. Vanaka for your question, by the way. Um, this is my first foray. I was completely supported by the Women and um, Black Sugar Apple Grant production company, Kyle and Kerry, to do this. Yeah, it's my first one. First of many. Yes, first of many, Sharon. <laughs> um, I, this is my first uh, uh, co-directing on a feature film. Um, I have uh, produced directed and re I wrote a short film that was featured at the International Hawaiian Film Festival called The Black Pen. It's about child sexual abuse uh, in Tonga. And uh, I'm currently writing a feature film script called um, uh, Mountain Heart. And that's based here in Tonga again. And again, uh, the, the experiences that I'm having writing this feature film is quite interesting because I'm touching base with the the school that I'm writing it about uh, and just having a lot of consultations with the, the students there to see, you know, um, how they see themselves reflected in the script, but also um, trying to put together a, a local uh, film crew and to use just what we have here in Tonga and not have to, um, you know, we're in a different age now and receiving communication um, and receiving stories um, and I think we need to, you know, the more we wait for funding to come through to be able to fund the production and um, post-production costs, I think, you know, 
10, 20 years will go by and your story will sit there uh, waiting waiting for the, for the money to come through. So we've, we've had interesting discussions locally. The local team here are really keen to just shoot it, edit it. Um, you know, we're in the middle of writing it. So I'm really excited to see how this ends up. And I think, you know, if the story's good enough, um, it'll grab the, the audience's a, attention. You know, it's no longer about... Uh, expensive production gear anymore it's it's all about the story thank you Arthur and Sharon we will take one final question if there are any from the audience there yes there is a question Hi, good evening. Thank you so much uh, for the movie. Uh, I have a question. <laughs> Where are the men in this movie? Where are the men? What's their role here? Because I don't see any of them. <laughs> They're so somewhere else. <laughs> They're hiding or I don't know. Just, uh, just a question. Thanks. Most of them were in the production crew. So the cinematographer, the audio technician, uh, but the editor was female, uh, one of our fierce female editors in Aotearoa. Uh, but yeah, most of the men were in the production crew and the co-producer, uh, Kerry and uh, Kyle. Uh, Kyle is uh, their partners and uh, Kerry's from Papua New Guinea and uh, Kyle is uh, from Aotearoa. He's a Maori, indigenous Maori, so he was a co-producer. Uh, Sharon, can you think of anything else? Yeah, just... Uh... Thanks, Sofa. Just uh, in terms of that, you know, there were men, um, a lot, quite a few men in our one, the boys um, sitting around drinking grog. Um, I think, though, too, you know, this was really about putting our woman right in the centre, right in the centre stage, right? So not in the background. Everything else can fade into the background. These were about our women and our girls front and centre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you so much um Arthur and sharon for being present uh here tonight and for giving your time and the patience and the solidarity for also being present with us here today we congratulate you for a well-produced and directed uh, movie key messages as well that we can also learn and uh take out from that movie on our culture and on how culture is embedded in the Pacific and uh, how it takes root and also the key messages on empowerment and looking back to our roots and our family as well. And with that being said, I'll ask the audience as well to also join me in saying thank you and to congratulate uh, Sharon and Offer today. Thank you so much. I'll now hand over to Aquila. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Offa and Sharon. Uh, thank you also to the actresses, the actors of the film, Vinava Levu, uh, to all of us. Please, round of applause. We've done the first uh, session today. Uh, thank you so much, USP, for being such a great host. Uh, and also uh, Pacific Community, the partnership with OHHR uh, Pacific Office, and of course our donors, uh, the support from the European Union, uh, the yeah, round of applause, they are here, and also from um, the, the Sweden the government and also Australian government, round of applause to them as well. And uh, to, to, to the rest of us and also those who are viewing in from the Pacific, from USP campus, Suva Fiji. And whilst you're going out, uh, just a reminder that tomorrow we are also having our next uh, session. It starts at 10 o'clock, so we'll have refreshments uh, here at 10, and then we will be having the first um, uh, a film, which is uh, Nuclear, Nuclear Savage. So tomorrow, thanks Ben, uh, uh, in the morning, uh, and then we'll have lunch and then we have the second session um, uh, after lunch. And then we will also have Talanoa session regarding uh, the, the, the movies that will be shown tomorrow. Of course, Sunday will be, we'll be showing also and then we'll, we'll keep on updating you, of course, from tomorrow and onwards. Have a good night.